Aspergillus. Aspergillus is an opportunistic fungus, meaning that whenever it has the opportunity to enter your body and cause destruction, it will. Now, what type of disease it causes? It causes aspergillosis and the organism in the genus Aspergillus, which we're going to study today, is Aspergillus fumigatus. Now, Aspergillus fumigatus is it exists in the form of mold. Now, some fungus are actually dimorphic, meaning that inside the body or outside the body, it has a specific type of shape because of the certain degrees at it, which is present. Dimorphic meaning that outside the body, it would be the form of mold, whereas inside the body, it would be in the form of yeast. But this organism in both human or outside it exists in the form of mold meaning that it is actually not dimorphic now the other thing about this is that it has septas which help us differentiate from mucor which has which does not have any septas now another thing is that it is trichomatous meaning that it forms v-shaped branches now other thing is that these branches make a specific 90 degree angle at which it is forming meaning that they are parallel whereas the other organism mucor is not another thing different about this organism this mold is that it now how it will divide it will divide asexually now asexually for asexual division you need to form spores now spores at the end of the hyphae they give rise to uh, radiating chains of small babies small baby spores now these baby spores are radiating outside and they are not encapsulated unlike mucor which is encapsulated so the basically what this has this the conida the small babies that spores that are producing asexually do not possess a sporangium Whereas this, if it is encapsulated and multiple babies conida are present inside, we will call it a sporangium. Now, how does this grow? Now, this organism, this mold grows on decaying vegetation. Another genus of Aspergillus is known as Aspergillus flavius. Now, this does not grow on decaying material. Instead, it grows on nuts and cereals by growing it produces a certain type of toxin known as alpha toxin which is if engulfed by the human body it will result in carcinogenic properties why because it depresses our tp53 now tp53 is actually a proto oncogen which is helps us to prevent cancers now this alpha toxin is known to cause carcinoma formation in the liver this gives rise to our hepatomas which progress to carcinomas so this aspergillus flavius which is forming aflatoxin is actually forming cancers in the liver how by inhibiting the function of tp53 which is actually a proton cogen so back to our topic back to our topic now we were studying aspergillosis fumigatus fumigatus now this is grown on decaying material now uh, when this organism is grown here what happens is this by the wind can be carried and become when the conida or the spores become airborne they are taken by the organism now if you have such a wind obviously it will affect your eyes which will lead to a corneal infection it will affect your nose your ears whoops i, I didn't draw them here so that will result in that they will invade your skin if there is a skin abrasion they will invade your corneum they will invade your ear they will invade your paranasal sinuses and resulting in sinusitis that is the all of those conditions are normal easygoing type of fungal infections but what happens if the patient is immunocompromised this organism actually then goes into the lungs now in the lungs it can form many form of granulomas uh, 
but if the patient has been previously affected by tuberculosis tuberculosis have cavities formed in them when they are being healed so this organism will go inside those cavities and form a specific type of sign which we can only see on x-ray which is known as the halo sign see this is aspergillus that filled the cavity and when we are when we are seeing this on an x-ray we can see it as a halo sign okay what happens in the, if this patient turns out to be an asthmatic now if the patient is asthmatic it will result in allergic response in the bronchi which will worsen their asthma even further by increasing our ige titer and this patient will expectorate brownish bronchial plugs and the asthma will obviously be severe, quite severe. Now, how do you diagnose it? We can diagnose it by taking a biopsy, by, by taking a small chunk of tissue from here. And what we see is we can see our branching hyphae because it exists in the form of moles, whether inside or outside the body. And we can see radiating cornida, which we've discussed. There's small branches, small babies, small spores forming. If we culture it and if the organism is invasive meaning that it has punctured through our cavity into the lung parenchyma what will we see we will see high titer of a specific antigen which is known as glass galactomannan now this is very 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 important say galactomannan antigen galactomannan antigen galactomannan antigen because of aspergillosis crossed the cavity and infected the parenchyma now in asthmatics what we see is if they have um, asthma like symptoms we will also obviously see ige titer and if they are uh, expectorating a brownish mucus plugs we can uh, see the hyphae in them as well now, how do you treat such a patient? You can treat such a patient by giving, if it is invasive, very conazole or amphotericin B. And if the patient has a kidney disease, we can shift the patient to the liposomal amphotericin. Or in some cases, even if you are not responsive to all of this regime, we can give the patient caspofungin. On mathematics, we combine corticosteroids in order to reduce the inflammation which has occurred in the bronch our bronchi and combine it with etraconazole which is an antifungal because obviously we have to treat the primary condition as well